Ireland's lung health is one of the worst in Europe, with one in five people dying as a result of lung disease. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, is a major contributor to these deaths, affecting over 400,000 people in the country. One of the leading experts in lung health in Ireland is Jerry McIlvaney, Professor of Medicine with the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. So COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and it's a combination of two types, chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Chronic bronchitis is where we cough up lots of phlegm. Emphysema is where we have an inability to get oxygen from the air across into the bloodstream. And generally there's a combination of those two in the person with COPD. The funny thing is that COPD is responsible for as many deaths in this country as heart disease, and yet it doesn't seem to get the profile. Why is that? I think in part that is due to the fact that COPD is regarded as somewhat self-inflicted. That people say it's due to cigarette smoking, and that, to an extent, it serves them right. Obviously, we don't agree with that. More recently, we have focused on the genetic element of COPD. And we've identified, along with others, that there is a genetic component to this. And a major genetic component to COPD is alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Alpha-1 is a protein produced in the liver. Its primary role is to protect the lungs from harmful things we inhale, such as cigarette smoke. A lack of alpha-1 leaves the lungs vulnerable and exposed, leading to inflammation and chronic lung diseases such as COPD. Think of alpha-1 as a bad gene. And you get the, the bad gene from your mother and the so-called normal gene from your father. You still have an increased risk for development of COPD if you smoke. If you get the bad gene from both parents, you have a very significantly increased risk of developing COPD even if you don't smoke. Ireland is one of the largest populations of people with this condition in the world. So approximately one in every 24 Irish people have alpha-1. Unlike other forms of lung disease, alpha-1 patients present with COPD symptoms much earlier in life. Stephen Smith was diagnosed with the condition when he was only 25 years old. Yeah, it was very tough to take, like, you know, first couple of weeks, like, I was wondering why was it me, like, you know, I kept myself fit, healthy never smoked, I was just wondering why me, why me, that kept going through my head, but I just had to get up and get on with it and deal with it, like, and keep positive, and keep going. And I was diagnosed with alpha-1 deficiencies, severe emphysema, and then transferred over to the Matter Hospital to the Heart and Lung Unit, and then I did was realize, realized when I was told, like, I need a lung transplant, that was the only solution. Like, it was a big shock to get. And I was putting oxygen 24-7, like, and um, I had to give up work, like, and, uh, football, you know, fear going to socialise in case you go out and pick up an infection. You couldn't go on holidays when you're on the transplant list. Like, you always had to be on call. How long were you actually waiting for your transplant before you got it? Well, like, I was three and a half years on the transplant list, and I'd say I was sick about eight years in total with, with um, the sickness. My whole life has changed since I had my transplant. I'm able to go to the gym now, do a bit of fitness work, I'm able to go up to Trumalee down and play a bit of training with the boys down on Tuesday night, Friday night, whatever, like, and go do the shop and help clean the house. Uh, do, do simple things in life again, that's exactly what it is. Like, there is um, a lot of people I'd have to thank now, like, number one, especially my donor, like, you know, every morning you wake up and you go and do a gym session, you're thinking of your donor the whole time. It's just unbelievable. If to find a treatment for this alpha one, it'd be brilliant. It'd be brilliant for everybody, like anybody that's carrying it or anybody has the disease. Eight percent of lung transplants carried out worldwide are due to alpha one. Early detection is key in minimising the severity of this condition, but ninety percent of people in Ireland living with the deficiency remain undiagnosed. This is one of the conundrums we have, whereby. They're often misdiagnosed as smoker's lung disease or poorly responsive asthma, and they're not tested for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. We are the only country in the world with a national targeted detection program for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency for genetic COPD. It's a very simple blood test, very easy to diagnose, and we can offer certain treatments or advice that will help soften the condition. Josephine, you got diagnosed with this alpha-1 deficiency. Did you know anything about it at the time? Not a thing. I, I did never heard of it until my brother was diagnosed. 
and as a result died. He was diagnosed before he died with alpha-1, which is a hereditary disease. The rest of us, there were nine other siblings, had to be tested as well. And, and with the result, uh, there was four of us full-blown. Actually, I was only 52 and I had no symptoms whatsoever. But then I developed emphysema and had to give up smoking, which I did after 38 years. It was hard. Good on you. Mm. I found the stairs it was hard up and down the stairs. So I moved down to Betty's Town for a better quality of life near the beach. I haven't really looked back since. Josephine is now helping Jerry and his team to develop an alpha-1 replacement therapy as a participant in their clinical trial. The therapy involves extracting alpha-1 from the blood plasma of healthy human donors and administering it intravenously to alpha-1 deficient patients. In the recent study which we have just finished, we have shown that these infusions of alpha-1 once weekly can decrease the loss of lung tissue in people with severe alpha-1 deficiency. And this is a major breakthrough because this is the first time we've ever shown that you can prevent or at least slow down a progression of emphysema. So if you catch a patient early enough, you can save their lungs? I think we can, yes. The ideal thing for us would be a situation whereby the patient could self-administer the alpha-1 in, in a fashion similar to those people administering insulin to themselves on a regular basis. And we'd like to have a situation whereby they did not have to do it as frequently as once a week, maybe less frequently than that. Have you felt any different since you've been getting the, the therapy? Um, emphysema hasn't got any worse and I have less chest infections as well. I hope it's licensed and that other can, others can benefit from it. I'm not finished with life yet and I hope I have another 20 years. I mean, now my husband mightn't like to hear that, but <laughs> that's the way I feel at the moment. The only thing I regret is if all this was available when my brother was alive. He'd be here with me today.